Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. Discover Thrawn's origins within the Chiss Ascendancy in the first title in an epic new Star Wars trilogy, beginning with Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy. Written by best-selling author Timothy Zahn and read by Mark Thompson, Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy is on sale now wherever audiobooks are sold. This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Vanessa Marshall, Harrison Dula from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 362. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I'm your host, Dan Z, drinking One Nation coffee out of my orange Coffee with Kenobi logo mug back from 2014. Thrilled to talk some Star Wars with you today. We have a great show with Tyler Pompa and Jeff McGee joining me to discuss all the great reveals from Hasbro's PulseCon. So pull up a chair. Grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Joining me today for a cup of coffee are two special guests who are going to talk with me about Hasbro PulseCon and the wonder and the excitement of all the new releases. I I guess it's exciting if you don't mind spending a few dollars. So we're going to talk about that quite a bit. First, we're going to bring in from Talking Toys, Marvin Dog Media, and so many other incredible things, Mr. Jeff McGee. Hey, hey, Dan. Uh, uh, just uh, before I forget, uh, I would like to include with that uh, this time next week, uh, Bantha Banter will be making its triumphant return. And, you know, that makes me happy for sure. Yes. I've been uh, campaigning for that uh, since it, since I won the trivia contest a few years ago. Well, there you go. And, and it's, it's finally happening again. It's a little bit different this time, but I did want to get that out there because I'm nothing if not an old school huckster. I wanted to get that up out there on Front Street before I forget anything else. But hi, everybody. And Dan, thanks for having me on the show. Of course. Yeah. No, it's you're not being a huckster because everybody likes to hear your stuff. So it's it's very, very fun for me. We're just talking pregame uh, with our other guest. Yes. The voice you're hearing is that of Mr. Tyler Pompa. If you are in the CWK Alliance and listen to CWK Pro, then you are very familiar with Tyler and Tyler, you're always so great about chiming in with your top fives, and you're always a regular on Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So I am thrilled to have you on, my friend. It's it's, it's a real honor for me. Yeah, hi. Thank you for having me. I'm, like, super excited to be here. It's uh, been a long-time fan, so no, it's an honor for me as well. Like, just It's one thing, like, being on the show and just typing things, but actually, like, getting to talk to the Dan Z, like, local podcast hero to me, like, Awesome. Oh, you're very kind. You're very kind. Uh, so let's let's do this, guys. Let's let's talk about it. Hasbro PulseCon was last weekend, Friday and Saturday. And Jeff, off the top of my head, or until you might know too, how many Pulse Cons have they actually had? Uh, this was the first one I'd ever heard of, uh, to be honest with you. So uh, at least one. <laughs> and and <laughs> yeah, to, be fair, to be fair, you know my 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 bent is more toward vintage toys, so. I'm not always as up on the announcements of, of new toys as, as I should be, especially when it comes to Star Wars. But uh, I know they did one last year, and as, uh, honestly, that's the, that's the first one that I remember. And yeah, Hasbro- I don't remember them doing anything special within these. Like, Hasbro Puzzle had been around for, like, maybe a year. Sure. So. That's a good point. That's a good one. I know Hasbro does has done a convention for a couple of years, but, of course, not really mm-hmm. is going virtual anyway. So it was, it was great to have it, and as luck was ha- would have it, I was able to tune in for quite a bit of it, which was nice. And honestly, the draw for me was that Corey sent myself and Tom Gross a text of the, the Marvel Retro line, three and three quarter inch line. And as soon as he did that to me, my wallet said, because <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. You put retro on anything, I, I am toast. I am toast. So before we talk about Star Wars, we'll just kind of a, throw it out there. Did either of you look at, uh, show an interest in, or try to purchase anything that wasn't Star Wars related from Hasbro PulseCon. And Tyler, let's start with you. Um, I didn't really reach out for anything, um, mainly due to like kind of like a little bit of money being tied at the moment. But there was some stuff that caught my eye. Um, I am excited about some of the new Power Rangers Lightning Collection. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. That's one of like my big four fandoms. So we're finally getting like 
a Green Ranger without the the silver stripe on the helmet. So that makes me very excited. They're, they're bringing back like the old flip heads I had when I was a kid um, with added articulation. Like it looks like all the um, arms are on ball joints and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And then some of the Transformers look pretty cool i'm really interested in these robot enhanced designs they're kind of like marvel legends but transformers they don't change but they're very articulated like um models of the robots so i might have to pick up a couple of those too so that was the optimus prime that i saw that was looked like really really slick almost like a model itself probably i know um they just announced uh rc from transformers prime because i think this is the 10 year anniversary of that show so we'll, we're going to start to see more products from that. Oh, that's that's super cool. Uh, I Jeff, know it was a good show. Yeah, it was a great show. It was, it's fun. Mason is just sort of exploring Transformers. He's really in a huge Transformers kick these days. So I'm going to have to tell him about that. Jeff, what about you, man? Uh, uh, my son, as a side note, he watches a show called Show and Tell Toys. And every time I ask him if he's watching that, I always say, are you watching Talking Toys? And he always looks at me like, Daddy, that's your friend. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah that's right awesome i love that um and i love the video of you and mason doing your lego build oh thank um, you i i shared that i i've shared it to uh the talking toys page as well so uh you'll get hopefully get some views from there i appreciate um, that i i didn't i i looked at i kind of glanced at the transformer stuff uh, i have to stay away from that because um you guys were talking about how long pulse has been around uh three o'clock in the morning one night a uh, year year and a half or so ago i happened to be online Right, right after the uh, Ecto One Transformer went on sale, and uh, bought two on my phone while I was sitting there uh, looking at it, just wide awake at three in the morning. So, uh, you know, like Tyler said, the pocketbook kind of <laughs> limits what I what I can and can't look at. So, to to keep my heart from breaking, I don't do a whole lot of of uh, delving into these. But I did really like a lot of the GI Joe figures; those those larger figures they're doing now. The super detailed, articulated ones, classic guys, obviously. Line, yeah, and the uh, the Zartan, I really like. The only thing, and th- this wasn't necessarily a PulseCon related, but the Destros that they've been u- doing, I-, I like to call them Euro Trash Destros. Destros, the gold. Just, it, it's like yeah, it's Destro by way of David Bowie, and I love David Bowie and I love Destro, but those are two <laughs> tastes that do not taste great together for Agreed. me. Agreed. It's like peanut so, butter and tuna fish. Ex- exactly, and. uh and so, so I did. I did like a few of those GI Joes, but for the most part, I was trying to focus just on the uh, the Star Wars because uh, when we get to talking about the Star Wars, you'll find out that I spent. I, I basically blew my Christmas decorating budget on uh, Star Wars toys this year, so uh, that'll give you a hint as to what I bought. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> that that classified series, like I'm not a huge GI Joe fan, but I have like seven of them now, and <laughs> I gotta say that that's like tied for first place for my favorite toy line of the year that and the all elite wrestling action figures oh cool well we we've, we've got the right people on for this discussion for sure now tyler real quick do you open your classified figures oh yeah yeah i, I let all my toys breathe i like oh. the only one i think in recent memory i've kept in the box was the first edition um kylo ren from rise of skywalker i got the chase white box edition oh nice but I, I did buy a second one would... in the regular box to open. That, yeah, that's as I say. I can certainly understand why you would leave that one in the box. I did the same thing with my Bosque Black Series. I waited mm-hmm. until the archive one came out and bought that one, so I've got it on the shelf right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's cool. All right, so let's talk. We, we've hinted around. We alluded to it. Well, I guess I should say I I did purchase the three and three quarter Marvel retro line. I bought every single one, and I don't regret it for a single second. Then, in fact, that was <laughs> what I was the most concerned with besides what we're going to talk about in a bit. And then, of course, to no one's surprise, to either of you, I bought all of Wave 2 of the G.I. Joe retro line, and I bought two of the Cobra Fang, and I cannot wait. Nice. Very awesome. And then I get this message from Tyler that he picked up Wave 1 uh, for Corey and I, and I, and I about drove off the road. I was so excited. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to cause that. Sorry. No, it's great. It's great. I, I was at a stop sign, and I, and I saw it. I looked down, and I'm like, oh! No way. So that was that was very, very kind of you. All right, let, yeah, let, just let me know when you want me to drop them off, and I will do that. For sure, man. I appreciate that. All right, let, let's just start with, with the um, with the Razor Crest in the room. Let's talk about the Razor Crest. HasLab <laughs> has brought up something, and I had gotten a tip from someone I won't, I won't mention who had said, Mandalorian fans are going to be really happy in a couple hours. And I would say that is a very fair assessment. So before we had 
uh, Java Sail Barge. And Jeff, for some reason, I think you have that. Do you have that? I, I do not uh, because uh, I did not have the five hundred dollars it, it uh, required when it came out, and neither did I have the you know space. entire garage yeah. worth of space that it would require to, uh, to to display it. So no, I, I wish that I had been able to get that one, but I do not. And Tao, do you have it? I uh, no, I don't. I don't really collect the three and three quarter inch line. I'm a I'm a six inch collector. So if they came out with the six inch one, would you have purchased that in your? We had to be in your garage instead of the car. I would think. Uh yeah, I could maybe attach some like training wheels or something to it and ride it to work. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Motorize it. That would be a good uh-huh. call. So so we've got the Razor Crest. This is their next one. I I wasn't really sure where they were going to go. But it just makes sense because the Mandalorian is such a hot commodity, and it's really kind of driving the Star Wars train over the past year, I would say. And it wasn't as expensive as Java Sail Barge. I believe it's what three hundred and what's the exact price point on that thing? Uh, it's three fifty. Yeah, three forty nine ninety nine or something like that. Okay, so it's a, it was a lot more uh, reasonable than I expected. But let's talk about this. It was funded in less than it was about a day and a half. And is 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 quite a spectacular thing, uh, Tyler. Let's just start with you. What what do you think about this thing? I think that thing is incredible. That's that's a huge big boy purchase, though. I mean, <laughs> uh, I can't I can't imagine the type the, like the room you'd have to have to display that. But if you got the room, like that thing is definitely gonna be worth worth it. If you're a huge like fan of the show, like have a watch party on October 30th and be like, check this thing out. They're like, I can't see the TV, but that's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It, so they they have they have a stretch goal now of eight thousand, and it's going to come with an escape pod. And at the mm-hmm. time of this recording, they've got seven thousand six hundred twenty backers. And wow! Yeah, so I it, if the that all that the, they did for the Marvel Legends line is any indicator, like they're going to have so many extras of this because everybody's going to want it. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a stunning thing. If you go to HasbroPulse dot com. Uh, the star, you can see the, the vintage collection of it. it the escape pod's probably going to be funded. And they're, they're going 42 more days. I mean, what is going to be added to this thing? Because they're just going to get more and more people. Jeff, what do you do? You attribute the success of this? Is it the sculpts? Is it just because it's the Mandalorian? What do you think's going on here? I think most of it is because it's the Mandalorian. You know, I was talking to somebody else and they said, you know, I'm getting kind of tired of them just pushing Mandalorian on everything. And I said, but you've got to understand. The Mandalorian is the only Star Wars property that's come out in the last five years that has not been completely divisive. Yeah, it's the one thing that that Disney has produced that everybody has gotten behind, and very very few people I know really find fault with it. So I'm not surprised at all that they're that they're leaning into that. Um, and I think uh, the the fact that it is such it, it's it's a new ship, it's a it's a type of ship that we haven't really seen yet. Uh, in the Star Wars universe, so it's got a unique design, and we see a lot of it. It's it's very well used in the first season, and I assume we're going to see even more of it in the second season. Um, so, apparently, I activated my echo. That was the the bat signal. He's got to go. He's got to fight crime. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, a toy is in danger of not being opened. Um, <laughs> is it my house? Oh, you better go fix that. Yeah. yeah. It's over here. But, uh, you know, going back to what Tyler was saying about displaying it, this is almost something you would almost have to hang from the ceiling, a fix and hang from the ceiling. Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel like for, for, to display. And, uh, you know, I did the math on it, and they, they needed 6,000 6, backers before it would get made. That's $2.1 million. I really have a hard time believing that Hasbro can't produce this for less than that. Um, and I'm still torn about how I feel about Hasbro doing this. I, I back a lot of projects on yeah. Kickstarter, mostly music, um, you know, albums and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just, it, something about it feels, feels wrong. But at the same time, I also know that in this day and age and this, this, the economy of, of the toy market right now, this is the only way we're going to get these larger scale vehicles. So I'm of two minds about it. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if, I think if it was probably on toy shelves, it would probably be around the same price anyway. Um, yes. So I, uh, I, I don't know. I but I, but I, I really do attribute it to the fact that everybody everybody can kind of get behind the Mandalorian. And uh, the only my only concern is that um, we're we're not going to get a whole lot of three and three quarter inch Mandalorian figures to go with it. 
because the three and three quarter figures tend seem to be pretty much. And and again, I haven't seen I haven't seen uh, much uh, in the last couple of months, but uh, it seems like a lot of the reveals that we're seeing for the three and three quarter are all you know film film based. So I I, I don't know. I'm hoping that they're going to support it with additional accessories and, and and toys from the show. But even if they don't, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be a phenomenal display piece. The the main challenge for me is I, I the vintage line is fine. I think to me, that's just sort of a, a, a way they can charge a little bit more. I, I just want to see right. stuff on the actual cards. It still uh, burns me that I didn't get any action figures with the rise of Skywalker on a rise of Skywalker card or that Han Solo and Lando Calrissian are not on a solo card. I mean, that just yep. blows my mind. Right. Doesn't and make I, any sense. I've asked Hasbro about that, and they they were sort of they were really gracious. And I want to be super clear on this. Look, Hasbro's been great to me. They've been very generous and uh, supportive of this show, and they've sent me a lot of great free product. And they certainly don't tell me what to say either way, but I very much appreciate what they do. But that doesn't mean there aren't certain things that I would like to see maybe differently. As far as how I feel about this thing, at the, right now I'm not planning on buying the Razor Crest because it's massive. I don't know where I would put it in my studio without having to get rid of a lot of other stuff that I want to have displayed. And I've got the Lego one, which, of course, we just talked about at the beginning of the show. And I adore it. I mean, when I first saw the ship the entire first season, I just thought, oh, okay, there's another Star Wars ship. It didn't really blow my mind like the Millennium Falcon does or the X-Wing does on occasion. But I appreciate the collectability of it. I think it's amazing that it got back so quickly. Uh, but if I was going to spend that kind of money on a vehicle that size, I'd probably probably be more tempted to get the Millennium Falcon Galaxy's Edge edition. Yeah, that thing was super cool looking. I will say though, with like this getting funded so fast and looking so nice, it kind of maybe gives me hope in like a year or two. Maybe they'll be like, "Oh, hey, guess what? We're doing a vintage collection Ghost from Rebels." That would be cool. Oh, now if they did that, I would get that. Quick question, Dan, and I may have just missed this. Do we know if they're going to sculpt a tiny toilet? On, on, on the Razor Crest? <laughs> it is in there. It is in there. Are okay. you serious? I might yes. be in on um, this one then, just so that I can have an, a, a toy with a with a toilet. Right. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, good that would be the only I reason wa- I would I would back this one. Yes. I mm-hmm. watched the panel earlier today, and, like, um, they have, like, the, the carbonite freezing chamber, and then, like, kind of in the corner you see the little toilet. Oh, so I'm yeah. wondering if maybe I see as, like, one of the backer things, they'll put um, the Horatio Sands character in carbonite as, like, an add-on accessory to put in there. You know, they should they should have included that to begin with, in my opinion. I, I agree. Yeah. It is the ninth picture on, on Hasbro Pulse. There are 23 images total, but it's the ninth picture. Okay. So there yeah, you I know that's a pretty go. important picture. Yeah, we're, if we're going to make a stink about this, we might as well show it. But um, Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> it, so we mentioned the ghost. Is there is there anything besides the ghost that you both of you would say, you know what, I've got to, I'm going to get this one no matter what? If they if has if has labs did something because for me, uh, as I mentioned, it's the the Falcon is the one that I would love to get, but they don't have a has labs one for that. They don't need to, um, and it's not Star Wars related. I would get the USS flag if they offered that, but that's GI Joe. Yeah, you mentioned that, and I said yeah, the buy-in on that would be about a grand at least. Oh yeah. Um, you know, if it was Star Wars related, the only thing that I can think of that I would absolutely be in on would be if we got a blockade runner, a Tanted Four. Ooh. Ooh. In the three and three quarter inch scale, because we never got that in the original series, you know, for obvious reasons, because it would be huge. Sure. But I have always loved that design, and I and if we got that, I might, I, I would have to seriously consider backing that. That's a good call, Tyler. What about you? I I I'd say there's not really too much Star Wars like big vehicles out one outside of the Ghost, but uh, if Hasbro in general, if they were to do like a six inch scale um, command center from Power Rangers, like. I'd be all about that with like a viewing globe that would light up and like an actual two scale Zordon. Like that would be great for my lightning collection display. I, I, you need to send some pictures of your stuff, man. You sound like you've got a, quite a collection. Oh, maybe I'll take a video and post it in the cafe. Oh, that'd be great. That would be outstanding. I would love that. Uh, for me, I don't know. I mean, it would have to be something that reminds me of, of the retro stuff. In fact, I've, when I've spoken with Hasbro earlier, I said, you know, uh, you need to put out some more retro. You need to put out some retro vehicles. I mean, the retro line's so hard to get anyway. Oh, yeah. But if anything retro vehicle, I would get as far as this something that would be the scope and scale of Haslab. Maybe if they did a another version of the Death Star, I or the Star Destroyer. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be epic. I mean, you couldn't do a full scale uh-huh. Star Destroyer because that's impossible. But 
Yeah, I think something like that that would harken back, or maybe like a, a unique ad app. But I will say that my ad app from Rogue One is awfully sweet. It's hard to imagine topping that one. Yeah, I've heard good things about that one. It's very yeah, that 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 was a good release. That was a good release. You know what else I, I would I could be up for, and this would be very this would be actually very inexpensive. But if they were to do a uh, a limited run of an entire collection of the the mini rigs. Oh, that'd be great! That we got from from Empire and and Jedi. That'd be great. Just do just do a set, and you know, charge two hundred fifty three hundred bucks for it. But you get every single one of them in in a recreated retro box. Yes. But the tooling on them is a little more detailed and everything, and a little more modern. I I could actually be up for that. Or the micro but set. I'm, oh, the micro sets. That's yeah, if we're talking those. I'd love to have a vintage collection. Um, Episode three Jedi Interceptor. That's my favorite out of all the Star Wars vehicles. Like Ooh. I have the original one from 2005 obi ones. So if i could get one that's like a little more like collector grade of like anakin that would match it like i, I would definitely buy one of those for 15 dollars or so that's a great call that is a great call wow i mean there's there's a lot of options that in and, and listeners let us know if if you're interested in or if you've already participated in, the, in this HasLab fund because it's it's pretty remarkable and i'm gonna get to talk with hasbro uh later this week actually and i'm gonna Ask them some more questions yeah, about us. this. Pass along, pass along uh, some of your guys' points as well. I think that'll be fun. Speaking of fun, let's talk about the Black Series. Well, we'll save the holiday one for after the break. But Tyler, I'll start with you on this one. You are uh, the Black Series is your kryptonite, as we've established. Oh yeah. So uh, of the new releases here, talk to me about which ones really inspired you. So the things that get me excited are seeing like the. So I love all the new packaging. Um, all the differences so you could tell like which movie which franchise it's from yeah so getting to see the first ones uh with the phantom menace with the new jar jar and he looks amazing for a jar jar figure because i'm not like the biggest fan of him but i might actually get him because i only have like two figures in my phantom menace section and then seeing the dark side ray is really cool so i don't know if i'll get her because i have the the first ray and that was like a 30 second scene um, I'd much rather save that money and get a Ben Solo if they eventually do him, because I think we need a updated Adam Driver uh, photo reel head sculpt. Yeah. And I also really dig the uh, the Boba Fett because he's on a whole new like articulation scheme that I, looks like it's closer to the current Mandalorian with like the butterfly joints in the arms and stuff. So get him in a little bit more cooler poses. So I'll probably wind up getting him too. I noticed there was there was a huge huge um, excitement about that particular, but and it's a brand new sculpt too, the Boba Fett. Yeah, they said in the panel that it's uh, the whole new sculpt. So um, they've done a lot of new sculpts. So like a lot of the like the Phase One Clone Trooper, they re release. They it's kind of like a re release, kind of a remake because it's on a whole new body. Um, they've got one out right now of the Phase One. It's the Clone Lieutenant. That's a Walgreens exclusive. So this will be like on that same body but he's all white instead of any sort of like uh command markings sure sure well yeah what? the new boba fett may be the most screen accurate boba fett figure we've gotten yet agreed just yeah, he looks super cool it. yeah it's amazing agreed i i just want them to do a retro boba fett but in mandalorian paint scheme that's what that's what i want not related to this at all that's just pine the sky stuff so uh <laughs> the black mm-hmm. series has got they've got an archive set which is coming with a brand new 50th anniversary lucasfilm logo which is really sharp. We've got, we've got Cody, we've got yep. Thrawn, we've got Han Solo from Hoth, we've got Luke from Hoth, and I believe that's it for the archive. So, so Jeff or Tyler, are the archive ones? Are these just the exact same ones? But we're just getting a second chance to purchase them. Well, I know for Luke, they're they're they mentioned Luke and and Thrawn both have different face sculpts, or at least updated face sculpts. Oh, good. Uh, Luke is apparently a little more photorealistic and Ty- uh, Tyler may be able to talk more about that. That's just what I was reading from this. I was not that familiar with the original releases of both of those because I glanced at them and they didn't look exactly like what I wanted. And so I kind of moved on these. I may actually get the Hans coat looks beautiful. It's amazing. except it's brown and not blue, but it is in some of the, some of the from the Lucas home archives too. I know, but, but my toy was blue, so it has to be blue. No, I, I believe me, I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, Tyler, any I and so see the problem is when I watched PulseCon, I'd have the sound down because I was doing other things, so I could only watch the pretty pictures. I didn't get to listen, so this is helping me mm-hmm. too. So yes, the archive series is pretty much like 
the same bodies and stuff, but they say uh, if the character has the chance to do like the photo real technology, they do that for the face print. So like I had um, the original Anakin Skywalker from Revenge of the Sith. I mean, he was like originally like wave three or wave four. And then I wound up selling that. And then I got the archive one and it looks 10 times better um, due to that photo real sculpt. So yeah, Luke and Han will have that. So they'll look a lot more accurate. Um, Cody is the one I'm most excited for because him and Commander Wolf are the only two clone commanders I'm missing. And like last month, they just announced that they're re-releasing Commander Wolf. So I'll be able to get both of them by next year. Right. Which is, which is pretty epic. So we've talked about Boba Fett. We've got a, uh, we've got a six inch incinerator trooper. We've got the phase one clone trooper. We've got the armorer, which is probably the standout of this, of this wave. That is the one that I will be buying as soon as it's available. And I, don't purchase many of the black series figures because I don't have a lot of space. I will make room for this, this one though, because this figure is amazing. The only other one that, uh, in this wave is dark side vision Ray. And, and I mentioned this on Facebook live, but this is the first time we haven't heard it called dark Ray because that's just sort of a fan anointing thing. But the official way they're going to be describing her is Ray dark side vision. And she looks so photorealistic and so frightening that I'm compelled. Do I want to get this role? But I'm afraid that it's going to come to life in the middle of the night and try to kill me. I know this is a weird, this is a weird option to, to have for the black series. Uh, because you know, like, like Tyler said, she's on screen for, I don't even think it's 30 seconds. No. Um, and, and, uh, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going for. I don't understand why they couldn't just make a Ray figure, but give us the option. You know, I'll give, see, her, I love give us this. an extra cloak, and, and, and it, it, it. I don't know. It's just it. It is. It's a. It's a strange choice to me. I think it's brilliant because it's a fan favorite. Uh, it's another excuse to put Ray out. But I mean, remember how captivated we were when we saw the trailer from the D twenty three Expo, and they showed Ray as in with a red lightsaber that flipped out, and we flipped out because it was something we weren't expecting. So I don't know. I I get, first see this one being. One of the hardest ones to collect. What about you, Tyler? Which of, of these really kind of jumps out at you? Uh, I'm definitely excited for the uh, Phase 1 clones because, like I said, we've got the Walgreens ones out, and I've already got two of them, so now I need to get two of the plain clone troopers. Out, out of everything they released at the PulseCon, two of those were the only things that I really pre-ordered just to make sure because I know how fast troopers sell out. Uh, but the wave that he's in is actually starting to hit targets right now from what I saw. So it'll have like him, it'll have the armor minus the, the one helmet accessory, the three characters from the, the indoor three, the indoor pack, the yes. Han, Luke and Leia. And then I, the Cad Bane's in that wave too. Ooh, nothing wrong with that. So Ooh, that Cad Bane looks nice. Yeah. Cad Bane's pretty cool. Uh, so, so you, you want to get all these, are you interested in the incinerator trooper as well? Not really. Um, I, whoever it comes with troopers, I've tried only stick to clones. Like I've got a couple of the mountain troopers from the galaxy's edge set. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I made like kind of a special exception for those. So I don't know. It, it could also change once I see it in person, but I'd be like, Hey, I need that. No, I know that's, that's part of the challenge, isn't it? That's the real trick, isn't it? As they say, yep. There's not really one that jumps out for me. I mean, they're all they're all fun, but like I said, I had a number of Black Series figures in the first uh, year of it, and then I I actually sold them all and uh, bought some equipment for coffee with Kenobi, and I'm I don't regret that purchase, but at all. But these these are great. They're always so incredibly well done, well crafted, and they're they are works of art. Speaking of works of art, and being happy, when we come back, we're going to talk about. A sort of shocking addition. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books but can't find the time? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects, top-notch narrators, and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. Discover Thrawn's origins within the Chiss Ascendancy in the first title in an epic new Star Wars trilogy, beginning with Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy. Written by best-selling author Timothy Zahn and read by Mark Thompson, 
Thrawn Ascendancy is on sale now. And if you're looking for a full cast audio drama, don't forget to try Dr. Afra, read by an all-star cast, including Mark Thompson, Catherine Tabor, Jonathan Davis, and more. Dr. Afra is on sale now. Visit penguinrandomhouseaudio.com slash Star Wars to listen to clips and find your next listen, or buy now wherever audiobooks are sold. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is your one-stop shop for your vacation needs and your plans to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, or the cruise lines. Travel looks much different now than it did a couple of months ago, and with the opening of Walt Disney World and soon, hopefully, the opening of Disneyland, you need a place to go where you can trust, and they will help you figure out and navigate all the different circumstances and guidelines that Disney has put out for you. And I can say that we had our vacation modified, and as soon as dates were announced, MEI contacted me directly to help me reschedule, which is exactly what I was hoping to do. So if you are interested in rescheduling your vacation or want to try to plan a Walt Disney World Disneyland vacation or anywhere else you want to go on the planet, be sure to contact MEI and Miles Fan Travel at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash Travel. Their signature service and expert advice will help you maximize your vacation time and dollar, and they will help you figure out all the different changes and modifications going on at the Disney theme parks. They are amazing, and I can tell you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, the peace of mind that Becky Menken and the crew at MEI and Miles Fan Travel have given me is invaluable. If you're interested at all, again, go to www. That coffee with Kenobi.com slash mouse fan travel. I was gonna say I will say with that whatever you were like, oh let's go to break my mind immediately filled in the transition music. <laughs> dun, dun. Yes. So this is what happens. We're watching PulseCon and I see holiday edition troopers. And I actually said out loud, what? I couldn't believe it. Uh, people who've been listening to the show for a while know how much of a huge Christmas fan I am. And when you combine Christmas and Star Wars, and Jeff, I know you're very much in that same camp with me. I, I have my own Star Wars Christmas tree. Yes. I have two Christmas trees every year. I Same here. Same here. It's uh, And it's about to get a lot more interesting because we've got one, two, three, four, five brand new holiday edition troopers. I know that it was discussed on the on the stream that when they first introduced this concept to Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm wasn't wasn't really crazy about it, but they convinced them. I'd love to hear more about that process. But we've got a uh, holiday edition clone trooper. We've got a storm trooper. We've got a Sith trooper. We've got a range trooper. And we've got a holiday edition snow trooper. They have various uh, shades of red and green. You can certainly find the images all over the web, including Coffee with Kenobi, and on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and then tonight on Facebook Live. We showcase and spotlight them and talked about them quite a bit. Jeff, I'm going to start with you on this. Tell me your your things on the line, how you kind of, what do you think about the criticism and which ones did you go after? Well, uh, I think the criticism, I, I, I don't understand the criticism because it's clearly not something that is designed to be canon. Uh, and, and, and I guess I understand the criticism if you're saying, I can't believe we got this and not something else that I would have liked better you know, something more from the Mandalorian or from one of the films or something. I guess I kind of get that criticism, but to just say, man, these things are just not what I wanted. I'm like, I I don't know what you want. They're, they're, they're holiday stormtroopers. (laughs) And uh, I think, I think these are great. And, you know, just like you, I, uh, I have already pre-ordered all five of them. Uh, The range trooper, unfortunately, which is the target exclusive is uh, currently sold out. I don't know if they'll be getting more or not. Uh, but I understand why, because it's the one that he's dressed like Santa Claus and he comes with a D.O. that is painted to look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I think this is a charming idea. It's whimsical. I love it. And I spent uh, half of my Hallmark uh, Star Wars Christmas ornament budget on these already. So I'll have to do some some real soul searching when it when uh, when it comes time to go buy Christmas ornaments this year. Uh, Tyler, is there anything that you wanted to get or did you go after? Uh, you remember how I said before the break that I tried only stick to like clone troopers. Uh-oh. This might break that rule <laughs> because these are all like ridiculous in the best way. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'll probably wind up getting at least two of the clones, but everything else, if I find them, like I think they'd make a great holiday display. My wife's a big fan of Christmas. So I think I can slip this one under the radar. Oh yeah. It's that's, that's uh, what it's built for. I, I grabbed the, the clone trooper. 
and I grabbed the Sith Trooper mostly because I liked those color schemes the best. It wasn't because of the troopers themselves, per se. I just love it. The red, the green, the package itself. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And, and I saw there was criticism. And I thought, oh, okay, I respect that. Uh, I think it's worth noting that these are the first, since Disney took over, these are the first figures or items that have been sold that are not directly canonical. Uh, you know, at Disney World, they had, you know, Mickey as Luke Skywalker or Goofy as Darth Vader. All that stuff went away. And they weren't doing that anymore because they wanted to take a very serious approach. But now they're showing me that they're just having a little bit of fun with it. And I I applaud it. I think it's wonderful. I, I didn't want to get all of them, like I said, because not all the color schemes necessarily work for me. And I'm going to have money now to buy the Hallmark ornaments that Jeff isn't. So that's a good thing. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, Dan. <laughs> You've got- <laughs> you know, I didn't love them all, but um, I figure I, I, this is this is the problem when you're me. And I blame my mother for this. Right? <laughs> and you'll have to pardon my dog for snoring into the microphone. It's okay. Uh, Tyler, you don't know this, but I, I always refer to my, my late mother as the great enabler because, mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, there were, there were two that I wasn't extremely, extremely fond of. One of them being the, uh, the clone trooper. Oh, really? Uh, but uh, he, I, I don't know why I, the, the fact that he came with a, a candy cane for his, uh, his weapon was a candy cane. And the porg wearing a wearing a scarf was what put me over over the line on that one. Uh, of saying, yeah, I'm going to get it. But I was already buying three of them, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get the other two because I, if I can have a complete set, I'll take a complete set. Um, and then, of course, you know, you've got one that comes with Babu Frick, and there are three that come with porgs yes. uh, as penguins. And then, of course, you know, Dio is Rudolph. And I just think that uh, not only – is it a great idea, but I feel like they've really done everything that they can with this idea. And that's another reason I wanted to, uh, to make sure that I got all five of them because I wanted to support this sort of, I hate to say, even call it risk taking because I just want to support this sort of whimsy because I just think it's charming and it's, it's fun. And I, I think people take star Wars way too seriously. And a, a lot of times, and, um, I think this is a way that we can sort of, you know, take the air out of it a little bit and i'm just now noticing that the imperial stormtrooper uh his chest plate looks like a christmas sweater yes that's true and i'm in love all over again <laughs> <I know. laughs> there, there's a lot to like and i think the sith trooper has like a it's like a snowball projector like the the blaster itself is like it shoots snowballs is it at least it looks like that to me probably it wouldn't surprise me it's great. It's great. And can you imagine, gentlemen, the cosplay that's going to come out of this? Oh, I can't wait to see that. Oh, the 501st will hopefully be all over this. So they're they're wonderful. I love them. Uh, it's very Christmassy. Hopefully this is just a sign of things to come, but I'm ecstatic about it. I am thrilled about it. Let's let's move on to the last big reveal, which is the the well, we I guess we talked it. Well, no, we didn't. We didn't talk about the 3 and 3 quarter inch Vintage line. We've got the Incinerator Trooper. We've got Captain Rex. We've got a Tie Fighter pilot on a Return of the Jedi card. We've got Anakin in his peasant disguise from Attack of the Clones, sort of the, the middle of that film, which I thought was pretty cool. We've got the Queen Amidala. That is, she's got this is from the Phantom Menace in her all black. And then we've got a Battle Droid. So Do we need a new Battle Droid. I, there haven't been any Battle Droids on three and three quarter inch card in a very long time. I don't believe. But do we need another battle droid? You know what? Uh, we do because army building, you know, my guy. Army building for sure. And then At they're, thirteen they're, bucks a pop. They're well. I mean, they're really fun in the Clone Wars, and my son loves them. And every time I talk like a battle droid, he laughs really hard. So it's worth it for me for that alone. Sure. Okay. And and I realize I'm being I'm being I'm being uh, you know ugly fanboy there. So I, I really am just kind of joking. But um, hey, you're this allowed. was the part. This was the part of the line that excited me the least, and I hate it because, you know, three and three quarter is is always been has always been uh, closest to my heart as well. Yes, um, I, I do like the uh, the Captain Rex figure. I think looks great. Uh, I think the Tie Fighter pilot figure looks great. Um, I could honestly care less about the Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace figures though, because um, I I just I feel like those are the ones that we always see that are peg warmers mm-hmm. in stores. You put you put Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones on anything, and it at least where I live, the, they just sit on the pegs forever. And so I keep wondering why they keep trying to make that happen. Sure, no, that's fair. Uh, Tyler, what about you? Um, 
I, again, I don't really collect the three and three quarter inch line. However, I may wind up actually picking up that Anakin for like a, a nostalgic <laughs> reason because my uh, my first Attack of the Clones figure I got was actually peasant disguise uh, peasant disguise Anakin. Cool. With like the telescoping lightsaber in the arm, so that one just kind of hit me like right in the right in the field. I was like, oh, I had one like that, so I might get him and hang him up on the wall or something similar to that. Clearly, Tyler and I were a good pair to have on the show because he's the yin to my yang. Yes, I know. It's it's. A, it's almost, <laughs> I don't care for this at all. Yeah. That's what I'm going to buy first thing out of the box. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I And like you, Jeff, the three and three quarter inch line is my, is my favorite thing during the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and the Rogue One Force Friday events. Everybody was running over to the Black Series and I was going over to the three and three quarter inch line. And I was glad that I wasn't super into the Black Series because that was what I cared about. I love those figures. It's certainly because of the the Kenner love that I have from, you know, when these things first came out in 1978. I, I will always adore and treasure them. And as we talked about a little bit ago, I, I, I appreciate the vintage line, but I don't have a ton of them. Just because either I don't need, you know, 10 different Chewbacca's or Han, or Han Solo's or Darth Vader's. But I like them when they... I just like the cards for where they come from. I do have Afra. I do have, uh, let's see, I've, I've got the three and two quarter Hondo coming. I've, I've got a couple of the rare ones like that. But for the most part, I stay away from them. Captain Rex might tempt me because it's Rex. But I don't know. I think the, the only one card back and the figure itself both look amazing on that one. They do. And, and the card back is obviously a big sell for me. If we ever get a an Ahsoka clone trooper if we get something like that, whether it's uh, for the three and three quarter inch, I think I will definitely be all over that one. But I, I'm going to assume that this is probably their least popular line, but I don't really have any numbers to back that up. So, gentlemen, anything else you want to say about all the new reveals from Ezra PulseCon? Or is there anything that you would like to see from them in the future? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in first. Um, I, I was I didn't mention this before. I was shocked that we got a, a, a six inch Jar Jar because I have not heard Jar Jar mentioned by anybody in so long, uh, and it just all again it always just amazes me. And I, I forget that I'm probably currently in the minority of toy buyers uh, because I I don't have the same fondness for the prequels that you know that, that Tyler does obviously, and uh, so I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that that audience is being served, but uh, I would. I would like to see a little more representation of of, of um, the original trilogy heroes, and and I know that we 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 get plenty of those, but that's you know again that's that's just my own personal preference. That that's my Star Wars. That's what I grew up on. Sure, but I also would like to see a little bit more um, interest in uh, rebels and the the sequel trilogy we didn't we didn't really get a lot out of the sequel trilogy in in these reveals you know i think ray was really the only one that we got if i recall yeah i think so and uh I, and i understand why they're doing that they're you know they're after everything that happened with the last jedi and and the rise of skywalker and they can certainly understand them wanting to distance themselves but it's it's a part of the lore so you know let's let's celebrate it and let's let's find the things about it that we do all enjoy I think in the there. next five to ten years, we'll probably see more of that. Similar to like what we've seen with the prequel stuff. And the Jar Jar right. one, I think we've seen a resurgence of him ever since Ahmed Best came to Celebration Chicago. And I think there's, I think over time, people who grew up with Jar Jar have just, that has stayed with him. And as I've said before, my, my kids love him because they grew up with him. They think he's funny. And I, he's always been appealing to me. I hope his, his figure sells really well because I think it's a nice looking sculpt. It is a great looking yeah. sculpt. Yeah, I, if someone who doesn't even like Jar Jar, I'm looking at it going, that actually is. I, I kind of like that. I, I was hoping to get some Indiana. The same. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm hoping though that for the 40th anniversary of Raiders, we'll get a lot of uh, six inch Indiana Jones stuff. Boy, wouldn't that be great? I'll be oh, all that'd over be that. Awesome. If only that'll be that'll be an easy one for me. Uh, the only thing I I've been mean, think pretty much. I mentioned everything I wanted to say about all the reveals, but the only thing that I was disappointed in was that we didn't get any announcements of another wave of the retro line, either the Empire Strikes Back or our New Hope figures. I really wanted to get all of them because I certainly would have hunted them all down, but that is not to be. Tyler, anything that you want to mention about this or what you'd like to see in the future? Uh, I So 
after the reveal of the Phantom Menace and the Rise of Skywalker box, it still leaves like a handful of movies that don't have figures yet. So I'm excited to see what they're going to bring for like Revenge of the Sith or The Last Jedi because we still haven't gotten the Black Series um, crate Luke yet. And he's one I've been waiting for since the movie came out. Yeah, I know. So I really want to, I really want them to uh, get, get on that one as soon as possible. And then um, I'm sure there's still some more, like a lot of those Force Awakens figures they could get remade with updated head skulls because i remember the poe dameron and the x-wing outfit that came out oof that, that one was rough looking so that one needs a photo yes. reel update so agreed agreed and what they're able to do technologically with with the photorealistic uh oh, figures, it's, crazy. it's amazing i mean the han solo from the empire strikes back uh that one you know based on your favorite figure of all time jeff mcgee uh that one <laughs> is is such a stunning likeness of Harrison Ford is absolutely uncanny. I just didn't I always, like I just didn't like the way they did the joints on it. No, I didn't either. I couldn't get him to stand like the the way the ankles were. Yeah, I always like show the new ones I get to my mom because she's a huge Star Wars fan. I'm like, check out how much this looks like you and McGregor. She's like, oh my goodness, that looks like a mini one. <laughs> I love that. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a cup of coffee with me and for helping to spread the word about our Star Wars family we've got here at Coffee with Kenobi. Be sure to tune in Monday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash live or www.facebook.com slash coffeewithkenobi and have a cup of coffee tea, or any beverage of your choosing with me as we continue the conversation. To join us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, and share your Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-friendly, spoiler-free place that is also drama-free, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community and be part of the conversation, talk about this week's show, or just talk about some Star Wars. It is a lot of fun and you'll make some new friends as well as catch up with longtime friends along the way. I also want to thank all of the new and longtime members of the CWK Alliance and let you know how much I appreciate your help and encouragement. A big thank you to our CWK Alliance members, Mary Perdue, Terrence King, Smooth Rivera, Dan Caperso, Aaron, Jim Tallman, J.C. Poe, Ed Kimoto, Greg McLaughlin, Robert Avila, Dustin Mills, Yancey Evans, Chelsea Sansbury, Connie Shee, Tyler Pompa, Hannah, Alex Procasio, Ian Thompson, David Nicely, Simbot Deptodarian, Christine Turk, Kurt McKellen, Ross Halliban, Dan Ream, Colby Mead, Alexander Moylan, Frank Mulder, Blake Weaver, Jim Capron, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Aaron Harris, Chris Gavarka, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Susan Gray, Thea Selby, Christian Dale, Brian McKinney, Jason Hall, Jared Cantor, Eric Struthers, Mark Suter, Angela Sauce, and Dennis Keefley. If you want to join the CWK Alliance, be sure to go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance and sign up today. Not only will you help out Coffee with Kenobi, but you also get access to CWK Forward, the exclusive weekly podcast not heard anywhere else. It's a great way to support and help out the show and... 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital to support the incredibly important work they are doing to help these brave children and their families. Plus, contributors at the CWK All-Star level can watch a video podcast of CWK Pour Over, hosted by me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. In addition to being part of the community on Facebook, please don't forget to visit our website at www.coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, live video, and so much more. If you have a question for me or just want to share your thoughts on the air, please feel free to reach out to me at DanZ at CoffeeWithKenobi.com and I'll share them on the show. You can also connect with me on Twitter at MrZare, M-R-Z-E-H-R. There are also a lot of ways to connect with me and Coffee with Kenobi on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Coffee with Kenobi and check us out on Pinterest. 
You can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network, and you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as StarWars.com, where I'm an official blogger there, as well as on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars, as well as other popular culture topics. And if you're considering starting a podcast or a blog, let me know how I can help you get started and help you make your creative vision a reality. Be sure to check out danzymedia.com where we can get the process started. I'm also available to come to your school, conference, business, or organization to talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. You can take that first step into a larger world. Thanks, as always, to our CWK sponsors, especially MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, our travel partner, and your one-stop shop for all things Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Lines, or anywhere on the planet. Please go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel to book your magical vacation and help support Coffee with Kenobi in the process. And don't forget to pre-order my brand new book that I wrote alongside Pablo Hidalgo and Cole Horton, the Star Wars book published by DK. Be sure to pre-order your copy of the Star Wars book today. I can't wait to share it with each and every one of you. If you like the show, please tweet out that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. And if the Force is especially with you, please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes or Google Podcasts. Every review makes a huge difference and helps to spread the word. Go to iTunes and search Coffee with Kenobi and you'll see the show there. My circle of friends has grown so much because of this podcast and each and every one of you, and it means so much to me that we have such a wonderful Star Wars community. Thank you all so much for all you do. Well, <laughs> Tyler, you you were amazing, buddy. I, I uh, think you were an absolute natural on a podcast. Love to have you back on any time. Where can... Well, people reach I out to would you love to be on yes we no, I, uh, where, where can what people reach out yeah to where me? can people if they want to continue the conversation with you where can they reach out to you um i mean i am on facebook so you can send me a uh, friend request or i'm in the cw cafe a lot that's mainly what i use facebook for and i'm on instagram at pompa tyler but that just shows my uh my toy collection pretty much hey nothing wrong with that yep i uh I, I like to show that off. As well, you should. Well, thank you again so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's been it's been great having you, and again, your support of of me of the show and everything you've done is you're just well. You're a I class just act, say, man. Like uh, for like this CWK fandom has been like a huge like uh like like very rejuvenating for me for Star Wars because after the Last Jedi came out, I loved the Last Jedi, but. It, like the fandom kind of showed its ugly face and I started to distance myself. But it was you guys that helped bring me back in, you and Tom and Corey. So being a part of this and being a part of the CWK Cafe, like it's really helped my, my love of Star Wars grow even more over these last few years. Well, hey, man, I, that means the world to me. And I'm very, very grateful for that. That's that's the plan all along. And you are a big reason for that, my friend. So thank you. Well, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Jeff, you have an amazing community as well and uh you're one of my favorite people's undoubtedly people listening already know where to find you but just in case where can they continue the conversation with you and tell us about all the great stuff you have going on okay well uh settle in folks it's going to be a a long night no uh i do want to want to second (laughs) what tyler said uh i i really do appreciate uh the community that we have at the cwk cafe i've not been as i'm not as uh involved as i would like to be because i'm working on my own stuff over here but every time i check in it is always it's it's fun to like stuff i like liking stuff and it's more fun to like stuff than it is to hate stuff and i'm glad that we all are are sort of like-minded in that regard and it just makes life so much more pleasant um as for where you can find me first off you can find me for all for star wars content i mentioned bantha banter is coming back uh, but you can also find me every wednesday on star wars splash page with my buddy matt moore we review the latest and greatest of all of the Marvel and IDW Star Wars comics. And those are day of review, day of release reviews. So uh, wait until you've read the books to listen because they are spoiler filled. But uh, that's every Wednesday. Uh, you can listen to Talking Toys with Taylor and Jeff, and, uh, where Taylor and I review vintage toys. Uh, the pilot episode, my buddy Corey and our friend Regina, we uh, review uh, different television series each, each time out. We, we talk about, we review the pilot episode of every series that we talk about and then talk about how it sort of relates to the series that came, came from it. I'm a huge TV nerd, so it's a lot of fun for me. Uh, the Saturday morning supercast is Corey again with our friend Olivia. And we review a different Saturday morning cartoon and pair it with a breakfast cereal from our childhood. 
Uh, that's narrow casting at its finest. But we've had uh, we've been doing that a little over a year and have had uh, some really good responses to it. We have a lot of fun with that. And uh, as I mentioned, Bantha Banter is is making its triumphant return. And those are all available wherever you find podcasts or you can go to MarvinDogMedia.com and find everything there. And I thought I was busy. <laughs> yeah, this 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 is one of six shows I'm recording this week. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you lending uh, the dulcet tones of your voice to the to the Coffee with Kenobi chat for sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, oh my gosh. Thanks to both of you so much for being on Coffee with Kenobi and talking about the exciting Star Wars reveals at Hasbro PulseCon. A huge thank you to Tyler Pampa and Jeff McGee for joining me this week on Coffee with Kenobi. And a huge thank you to each and every one of you for joining me not only on Coffee with Kenobi each and every week, wherever you find and listen to podcasts, but also for joining me on Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Think of it as the video version of this podcast. I'm able to look more closely at the imagery of Star Wars, break things down, have our top fives. It's just so much fun sharing the microphone with this amazing community. It's truly the most interactive thing we have going on, and I love it so much. This week we did top five Luke Skywalker moments, and next week we will be looking at our top five favorite Leia Organa moments. I can't wait to have you join me and please don't forget to pre-order the star wars book featuring myself pablo hidalgo and cole horton this book is going to blow your minds i'm so excited to see what kind of conversation it generates my goodness i i can't say too much but what i will tell you is you're definitely going to want to pre-order it and check it out oh i'm i'm just gonna stop now <laughs> i'm just really excited and i hope you are as well have a great week and weekend everybody and remember this is the podcast you're looking for This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. Discover Thrawn's origins within the Chiss Ascendancy in the first title in an epic new Star Wars trilogy, beginning with Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy. Written by best-selling author Timothy Zahn and read by Mark Thompson, Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy is on sale now wherever audiobooks are sold.